It's the little things that can make a huge impact. Same goes for your money. Joining us in studio is Howard Dvorkin, chairman for Debt.com, with micro money moves that will have you expanding your coffers and feeling more financially secure. So what would you consider a micro money move? I mean, first of all, you need to know where you are. You have to plan your goals. You have to sit down and look at where you are, where you want to be, in order to plan all those moves out. You know, and, and it also entails, what stage of life are you? Or did you just graduate college? Are you putting a kid through college? Mm -hmm. Or are you ready for retirement? There's all different levels. So you really need to understand what is your direction you want to head in and how to get there. Well, if we could just take those three groups, starting with the college student who just graduated, let's say, or about to graduate, what would be maybe two very important things that they should start to, to practice as they start looking for a job, going for their career, before they start really making more money? Well, when you graduate college, you're going to turn around. You're going to incur costs. You have to get clothing. And God forbid you have to move to the new job. You have to get a new place to live. You have to get furniture. So you have to budget for all those things. And then at work, you're going to have to deal with things that you've never seen before, like a 401k plan, you know, should you invest? Most people don't have the foresight to invest. I say now is the time yeah. the younger people should put as much money towards the 401k. So this is plans. where you're talking about financial priorities. What yes. would be a financial priori priority for someone who is, has a family, for someone who may be looking to send their ki kids off to college? I mean, essentially, how is it going to happen? Yeah. You can't bank on the athletic scholarship. Sure. You can't bank on the academic scholarship. Maybe your kid is just average. I know <laughs> a lot of us, yeah, <laughs> I know, oh, no, child. not my kid. Exactly. But the fact of the matter is, how are you going to pay for it? Right. Is he going to, he or she going to go to state school? And do they have programs set up? Uh, go through what are the what are the options? Does your state have a prepaid plan? Maybe investigate that. Do they go through? Should they invest in a 529 plan, which allows you to put money in? And and sometimes there's some great tax benefits for investing oh, okay. in that uh, plan. So you, there's all sorts of options. So different priorities at different stages, and when they get closer towards uh, the college years, should you be in 100% equities and risking their college mm -hmm. tuition, especially with the market right now where yeah. it's very high and it's probably good for a pullback or two over the next year right. is what I would expect. Okay, and how about for the, the senior, someone who is hoping to retire maybe in the next couple of years? Well, well it's interesting, Layla, because you were seeing seniors retiring with debt They've yeah, never had right. debt before. So how are you going to pay this debt? Does it make sense to work a few more years? Are you in good health? When do you start collecting Social Security? Should you defer that Social Security out as far as you can so you'll get more over the, over, over the, left, Whatever's the long left term? Over, yeah. mm -hmm. um, you know, the fact of the matter is you have to plan for these. What kind of retirement? I mean. You know, you have to also, again, look at what you're invested into. Should you be in an all equity uh, uh, portfolio or should you be a little more conservative and put your money into bonds and something called cash? Maybe it should be in cash. Okay, well, that's an interesting point. We do have some more tips. This is a good place to take a break. We'll be right back. We are back with Howard Dvorkin, chairman of Debt.com, and we're talking about micro money moves that you could be doing right now, no matter what stage of life you're in, that can make life feel a little bit more financially secure, have a few dollars stashed away, you don't have too many worries out there. Let's move on to automating your money. We have talked about this in the past where there are apps and services that will help you track your spending, but what other ways in which we can automate how we spend I mean, money. there's some great programs out there where you can automate your savings. So a certain amount of money goes into your bank account or an investment account. Also, 
who's on your payroll? I have two kids in college, yeah. and and so we automate the money that goes to them every single month. They get the same amount. And guess what? When they come in and say, Daddy, Daddy, I need more money. I'm like, I'm sorry. You oh, got your allotment. Tough so the, love over here. Oh, absolutely. They are my guinea pigs. But the fact of the matter is there's lots of things you could do to automate savings, even increase savings, increase your retirement deferrals. And I've even told people to go through and it, when you get a raise, take half of that raise and make the savings. So you don't have to spend every dime of the raise. People forget to do that. Yeah, it's Is no that fun. I know I'm yeah, a big yeah. downer. Well, you kind of are, but you know what? <laughs> no, it, but in all honesty, when you are thrown more money, whether it is through a raise or something, your first instinct is you do want to spend it. Of than course, but I want to buy stuff. Well, if, if you feel freer, <laughs> less, less constricted. But you could still feel free yeah. if you only spend half of it and yeah, save the other half. That is a good point. And, and we talk about compounding savings. And so when you see it grow over time, it can grow exponentially. Well, that's an amazing thing. This week, I was looking at my credit card statements and I have one set up for a 529 plan. And I couldn't believe how much that has grown over the last year with the escalation of the stock market. And what is it for? It's, it's an incredible thing. All I use it for is just normal expenses but it goes towards yeah. paying for the kid's college. And, and to your point too about dad providing your, a monthly stipend, but that also teaches kids to stay within the confines of that money. And that's something that adults tend to forget. Uh, and we also kind of touched on this and that is savings, but do it slowly because if you try to do it all whole hog at once. You'll you, never get anywhere never, no. because things come up. Maybe if you're putting through a percentage, maybe start off for the first six months or year at 1% of your take home pay, and then maybe jump it to 2% and 3% and maybe 4%. Do it slowly. If you go in and try to do it and all of a sudden something comes up, right. and that you have to pull it out and you wipe out your whole savings. That's so it's true. not a good move to, to, to jump in with both feet. What are your thoughts on checking credit? Well, you should check the credit because there's reasons for doing so. One is simply to make sure it's being reported correctly and make sure that there's no other issues with your credit. And, and if there are, those issues could cause you to spend, to spend more or cost you more over time. Right. So address them. Look at your credit reports at least once a year. You could get them for free on uh, Annual annualcreditreport.com. Credit. They're free. And the fact of the matter is it'll take you some time, but it's time well spent. It certainly is. And we've kind of just wrapping things up. Spend money consciously. So this is basically what you've been telling us all along, and that is don't just go out willy-nilly and impulsively buy things. You want to make sure that... Make sure when you have to shop, make yeah, a list. Make a list. And stick to the list. Yeah. The impulsive spends are where it gets you. That's you true. Know, getting towards the cash register, you know, trying to check out and they're throwing candy in front yes. of you. There, it's not a coincidence that the candy bars are there That's true. on the way out. That is true. Just stay away anyways. They're bad for your teeth. All right. <laughs> Thanks so much, Howard. Good Thank to see you. Thank you so much for having me. We are back after this.